Hello everyone. Welcome to Get Metallurgy and today we are going to solve physical metallurgy problems which were asked in Get 2018. This is part 1. Now, the first question is in the A reach end of AB binary eutectic phase diagram which is shown below, the solidus and liquidus are straight lines. You can see here. This is the solidus and the liquidus. No, a straight line. Uh, the freezing range of the alloy with six percent B is like here we have been given that uh, this point is twelve percent B and this is thirty two percent B. So somewhere in the between it will be sixteen percent B. So let it be here okay now since it is asking that freezing range so we know here there is a liquid and here it is solid and this is the region of solid plus liquid so solidification will start from this point and end at this point so we have to calculate this value range now to calculate this uh, what we'll do we'll draw a line draw this line straight line and from here also we'll draw a straight line and if you see this triangle this triangle hmm, this triangle that would be a b c d and e so from here we can see here that the ratio a e of triangle this smaller one triangle will be equal to a a e divided by a b will be equal to e d divided by b c okay this is clear this is the property of triangle we are using property of triangle so here a e a e we don't know so let it be a e and AB, AB we know 660 minus 460 is equal to ED. ED is how much? This is given as 16 percent B. So this value will be 16 percent and BC will be 32. So A is equal to half, half into this is 200. So is equal to 100. Now but we have to calculate D uh, from D to this point that is equal to EB. So EB is equal to AB minus AE. That is 200 minus 100. That is also equal to 100 degrees centigrade. So what is the freezing range here? So freezing range will be 100 degrees centigrade. Okay. So answer will be 100. Now coming to next question. In a Germany and quench test of the eutectoid plain carbon steel, which of the following represents the sequence of microstructures observed from the quench end of the specimen? So we'll see. So what happens during Germany and quench test? There is a specimen and water is flown from the bottom part and the first quenching which occurs is here at this part then after this there is a temperature gradient so if we correlate with uh, the TTT diagram which is shown like this okay this is temperature versus the phase which is uh, over the time you can say phases which form. So here is the austenite, then austenite plus perlite, then this is perlite, you know. This is the nose, and here to this point there will be martensite. Okay. 
here this water suppose this is at temperature room temperature and this is at the maximum temperature that is austenizing temperature so the maximum temperature gradient which will be present will be at this point so uh, we'll try to relate with with continuous cooling curve because it's more like continuous cooling it's not just it is getting cool at a, a constant temperature so from continuous cooling curve we can see here and these would be the lines okay now so this is at maximum temperature maximum temperature difference so this is the cooling rate and in this cooling rate there will be martin site so first structure which will form at the quench end you know quench end will be martin site and the second the temperature difference will be somewhat lower you know uh, temperature difference will be somewhat lower because uh, this portion is not in directly contact with water so somehow lesser so this phase this phase is also somewhat it is getting from martin site plus perlite you know in the cc uh, cct diagram we'll have phases around up to this point only so second case will be martin site plus perlite then at this region there will be a perlite but this perlite will be fine perlite and at this point whatever the perlite which will be formed that is will be coarse perlite why coarse perlite because here more time is present for decomposition to perlite that's why more diffusion takes place and hence coarse perlite is formed but here less time is available so final perlite is formed so what will be the sequence martin site yeah then martin site plus perlite yeah then fine perlite okay then coarse perlite so answer will be p okay now coming to third question mm. okay now third question a copper aluminium diffusion couple develops a certain concentration profile after an isothermal treatment at 600 degrees centigrade for 10 hours the time required to achieve the same concentration at 500 degrees centigrade is thus in hours okay given the interdiffusion diffusion coefficient for copper in aluminium at 500 degrees centigrade and 600 degrees centigrade are 4 into 10 to the minus 14 meter square per second and 8 into 10 to the minus 13 meter square per second so here guys uh, here there is a simple formula which is used which is given as d into t is equal to constant means diffusion coefficient into the time is constant because we are maintaining same concentration we are maintaining same con concentration and hence so we will write this equation as 6 d 600 degrees centigrade into time which takes place at 600 degrees centigrade equal to d at 500 degrees centigrade into t at 500 degrees centigrade okay so d at 600 degrees centigrade what is the d at 600 degrees centigrade? this is 8 into 10 to power minus uh, okay minus 13 into time at 600 degree centigrade that is 10 hours okay here yeah, it is given is equal to d 500 the what is the value of d it is 4 into 10 to minus 14 and time we have to calculate so this will be 2 2 into 10 into 10 power minus 13 plus 14 is equal to 2. So this implies t is equal to 200. Okay, so this is the answer. Now coming to fourth question. What is the requirement for equilibrium at a triple junction 
as shown in the schematic with gamma 1 2 2 3 and 1 3 as grain boundary tensions and theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 are dihedral angle so at this point uh, sorry theta 1 theta 2 theta uh, I have not mentioned it actually but it is here theta 1 and 1 3 here theta 2 and here d theta 3 okay so uh, this this basically uh, follows the law that the energy which you are taking divided by the sign of the angle which is just opposite of it like suppose gamma you know this will be equation as gamma 1 2 divided by sin theta 3 is equal to gamma 1 3 divided by sin theta 2 is equal to gamma 2 3 divided by sin theta 1 okay This equation is basically called as sine law. So it follows a sine law. So according to sine law, so we can relate here gamma 1 2 by sine theta 3 is equal to gamma 1 3 by sine theta 2, gamma 2 3 by sine theta 1. So option B is correct. Okay, thank you.